going on, guys? How are you? Good. You guys doing all right? Good. Good. So um, I, guess, I guess I'll start um, for you. Your, uh, your first uh, what week and a half now as quarterbacks coach. What's it What's it been like for you? Uh, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, the guys are great. Great quarterback room. I feel like we're getting better and having fun doing it. Uh, so I don't think you can ask for anything more than that. What What have you seen out of um, Malik and Evan through the first the first week and a half? Uh, they, well, first of all, they've been great. A lot of competition. Uh, they know the offense really well, and I think they're both getting better, uh, trying to work on different things with both of them, and uh, they're working real hard, doing a lot of extra things, uh, doing a little, couple things a little bit different. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm seeing some improvement, and uh, they're making they're making the plays that, that need to be made. Pete, hey, it's Jody Dimling. How much, uh, how much does it benefit you being around the last two years, even though you weren't with the quarterbacks, that you don't have to go back and learn film and watch every game and all that. You've been here. You kind of know. How much does, is that a benefit this spring for you to be able to teach and kind of help get them better? Uh, it's been huge. Obviously, I've been with Coach Sat for four years now, going on five years. So I know how he teaches his offense. I know what he wants. Um, and being specifically here at Louisville the last two years has really helped just building a relationship with Malik and Evan. Like you said, I wasn't with the quarterbacks, but I was still with the offense and had a pretty good relationship with them. Uh, and it's kind of made it a seamless transition. Uh, it's been great for me and great for them. Uh, and, and I'm just looking forward to continuing that relationship with them, really both on and off the field. And as a follow-up, what what's the next step for, or the next maybe for Malik? What do you want to see him get better at this spring as you move into the fall? Oh, well, obviously we know what Malik Cunningham can do with his feet and when he's on the edge making plays. I think just the next step is uh, continuing it, continuing to develop his footwork, uh, which in turn is going to make him a better passer. Um, and just continuing studying defenses, knowing the strengths and weaknesses of certain defenses uh, so you can attack those weaknesses in the pass game. Uh, so that combined with his, I mean, working on his footwork, I think is going to be really big for uh, him continuing to develop as a passer. Hey, Pete, Michael McCann, my Cardinal Authority. Um, you know, he's going to this spring without Dez, without Tutu. How's that relationship forming with the, with the other wide receivers so far in spring? I, I feel like it's been going really well. Obviously, we're going to miss Tutu and Dez. They were phenomenal players for us. Uh, but I think we got a lot of depth at the wideout position. I mean, I think we got probably six or seven guys that we feel really, really good about. Um, and they've been here for – some one year, some three or four years. So they have a great relationship with Malik um, and Evan. And, yeah, they weren't the primary playmakers last year, the last two years, but I think we'll see a lot of those guys step up. Hey, Cameron, again, when you look at Malik and Evan, it's a similar position to what it was a couple years ago where they were the two lone scholarship guys in the room. Do you, you think, I mean, being here at that time, you feel like they're a little more comfortable now than they were um, that, at that time? Yes, 100%. I think they're a lot more comfortable. Uh, obviously, 2019 was kind of crazy with our quarterback depth with Puma going down, and we'd play certain games with only one quarterback, um, and it was their first year, so they were still learning a lot. Uh, this is year three in the program. They both know the ins and outs of the offense, what Coach Satterfield's expecting, what we're expecting out of him. Uh, and really just how to take command of the offense. Uh, and I think I think that really helps. Obviously, uh, we only got two scholarship quarterbacks right now, but Tyler Jensen, the walk-on from California, he's been great as well. Uh, and then we also got Shy Wirtz, who started a lot, a lot of games at quarterback for Georgia Southern, kind of as an emergency guy. Um, but, yeah, Malik and Evan are definitely the leaders and, and very, very comfortable in the position they're in right now. Hey, Coach, this is Matt McGavick with Sports Illustrated. And kind of speaking about Shy Wars, have you had a chance to kind of work with him, or has he been exclusively in the wide receiver's room? He's been mo mostly with the receiver room, and he's been great at that, picking it up really, really, really well. Uh, he's, he's made a lot of plays for us for us this spring. Um, but with some of the stuff we do on offense, we can easily throw him in there, and he'll, he's will he been running that for four straight years, so he'd be fine with that as well. Hey, Pete, Michael McCammon again. Uh, kind of a, a recruiting type of question. When you only have two scholarship quarterbacks on the depth chart, um, I mean, that's got to kind of open up the pitch that you can, you know, sell to some of these top recruits out there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's an enticing situation for any recruit. Um, but again, wherever you go as a quarterback, you're going to have to compete. 
Um, so just the fact that we only have two scholarship quarterbacks right now. We got TJ Lewis coming in. Uh, Tyler Jensen is a great player as well. Uh, we got Nate McElroy from uh, Trinity. Uh, so there's going to there's gonna be a lot of competition here for whoever comes in. Pete, speaking of, of TJ Lewis, he's a guy that I think a lot of people have said, well, he's not a quarterback, he's not a quarterback, he's not a quarterback. And even Coach Satt said on signing day, maybe he's not, but you're going to give him a chance. Do you feel like what, with what you've seen through the recruiting process and now that when you get him here that 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 he he's going to get that chance, obviously, what, what do you think about him as a QB? Well, first of all, he's a dynamic athlete uh, and he fits with what we want out of the quarterback position. Uh, we want someone that can run it and throw it, uh, and he sure can run it. Uh, he has he has some tools you can work with at the quarterback position, obviously, which is why we signed him. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to getting him here uh, this summer and working with her, w- working with him, and hopefully uh, developing him as a passer. Uh, but yeah, I, I think he has a lot of tools that that you can work with, and he can be pretty successful in this offense. And, and as far as Evan is concerned, did you what did how do you how do you kind of go about with Evan? Malik has has started for a couple of years. Evan, obviously, everybody wants to start. How do you kind of broach that subject with? Hey, this if you know if you're the guy, you're the guy, and you got to get better and, and and push Malik. What's what's that been like? Well, first of all, Evan Conley is an awesome kid. He's a phenomenal leader, one of the best leaders we got on the team. He does everything you want out of a leader, and especially out of a quarterback. Um, and he's pushing Malik every single day. It's a great competition between the two. They have a great relationship. They're both great leaders for us. Um, and Evan Conley does everything you want. And he's a great quarterback, as you saw. Uh, 2019, he made some great plays in some big-time games and uh, crucial situations. So we feel great about Evan with where he's at. Um, and he's going to keep pushing Malik to be the best quarterback he can be. Hey, Pete, Cameron, again, how much how much do you mention t- turnovers to Malik or is that something that he already knows and you don't have to bring it up? Or is that something you guys talk about pretty much every day? Yeah, it's something we're em- emphasizing, not just with Malik, but as a program as a whole. Um, obviously, that was a big, a big downfall for us last year was we turned the ball over. Uh, everybody knows it. Coaches know it. Players know it. Fans know it. Um, but I'm a I'm a firm believer of not saying, hey, don't do this. We need to focus on doing this to prevent that. Um, So we're not hammering, hey, you can't throw interceptions. You can't fumble the ball. It's more of working on things to not let that happen. What's an example of something you you work on to not let those interceptions or those fumbles happen? Uh, Well, I mean, we just work on moving in the pocket, right? Moving in the pocket, two hands on the ball, hitting the ball with different, you know, punching bags or pool noodles, two hands on the ball. And then when you do get out of the pocket, high and tight, high and tight. So there's no loose balls, no throwing the ball at the end of a play. He's got to bring the ball back to the huddle. You kind of mentioned it a little bit at the beginning. What What's the first couple of weeks been like for you? You're, 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 you're a full-time assistant now. You've worked your way up. And as we talked a month or so ago when we talked to you, it's this has kind of been your dream. What, what's it been like to have your own room so far? Uh, yeah, it's honestly been a dream come true. I mean, I'm, I love it. It's been great. Um, just building e- even better relationship with the quarterbacks has been awesome. Um, dove straight into recruiting and uh, staying very, very, very busy. But I love it and wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. Hey, Coach, this is Matt McGavick again. Speaking of recruiting, how have you adjusted to uh, having recruiting be a more pronounced uh, aspect of your job now? Yeah, it's obviously been a lot different. I mean, the last couple of years I was I was recruiting kids, um, but also just assisting Coach Ladford and different coaches. Um, but obviously being a quarterback coach, you have more responsibility. Uh, you're the main recruiter for all the quarterbacks. Uh, so it's definitely a big change, but it's a change that I feel like I was ready for. All right, guys. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it, guys.